one of them is um, there seems to be a theme I've noticed in a lot of abductees or contactees experiences where it's almost like they're being called upon to help in some way to help the human race or to deliver a message of some sort. Right. And I'm, yeah. I'm wondering, yeah. uh, maybe it's good intentions, but I'm wondering about the possibility of them trying to use some sort of emotions within us for uh, maybe a different reason we're not aware of. And the other thing I was going to say is that uh, it's interesting. You mentioned the thing about, Oh, um, choosing certain people who, who might be able to be saved and whatnot. Uh, and it obviously reminds me of the ideas, the, the themes you hear about in the Bible about the last days and people being, you yeah. said Noah's Ark, Noah's Ark and stuff. It'd be like a modern days Noah's Ark kind of, except maybe with people instead of yeah, just well, animals on the that's boat. That's judgment day, right? That's what it is. It's judgment yeah. day, alien style. Yeah. So I'm wondering, Ooh. like, is there a possibility that these beings, um, are, were they maybe uh, spoken about in the Bible or are these beings potentially deceivers like, like, and I'm not saying this is the case, but like demons that are trying to uh, deceive us. Uh, I don't know if they'd be extraterrestrial, but demons nonetheless that are maybe trying to deceive people. And uh, I don't know with, with all this, these thoughts about, you know, giving us self-importance, like, Oh, you, we need you to save the world. We need you to deliver this message. Yet we never really see any sort of, message delivered in mass to the planet ever nothing that really seems to put a dent in much of anything so i'm wondering if they're trying to play our heartstrings or something in some way yeah really interesting man so so yeah we've had a couple people on here talking about the demon stuff and the way i always see it is that we have a human tendency to to simplify all of our you know our world right that's why racism exists because our brain's tendency to want to simplify information and not think things through and I think when people call them demons or angels, even angels, I think it's just, you're oversimplifying what's really going on. And there's a lot of evidence that that is a simplification, that these beings do have a life. They do have their own history. They have their own world. They have technology. They're interacting with other beings. It goes on and on on the depth and level of complexity. So I think that, I think that the human tendency to do that is we're projecting things onto them. And I think I, when I, every time I hear someone say demon, that these beings are demons, um, I, I tend, not you, but people maybe who even had experiences in calling them demons. I'm, te te I'm typically seeing them uh, not wanting to understand it, not wanting to think through it and being scared. So they're, they're not even approaching their own fear about the matter. They're actually just trying to kind of, just, they don't want to think about it. And so it, they're, they're simplifying all the information in the experience. Now, maybe that's fine for them. That's, uh, that's okay. Um, now, I don't want to push people if they don't want to, if they don't want to approach their own fears about something and they're projecting it onto something, that's what they have to do. And that's what they should do. But I don't think that's what the beings are. Now I do question, I think I do question your, you actually are actually bringing a good point. The, the, the kind of, uh, not the manipulation, but the, what are they really doing? What are they really doing? So there is two sides to this. One is, let's say that the, this is all just, uh, yeah, emotional manipulation. Let's say that is what this is. So, so we feel we need to do everything we can to help change society. And so, you know, for all I know, I speak for this for two years, and then one day it's uh, someone who will become the president. <laughs> Here's this, and that person agrees and changes the world, right? Like, who knows, right? Who knows what they're thinking on those levels? But there is a problem here that is adds up to this truth that the world actually is about to, you know, we're 7 billion people in and we're still growing, man. And we don't have the resources. There's a lot of papers out there, research scientists who say, dude, if we don't do something, it's about to tip. And there's a lot of, a lot of evidence that that's about to happen. And, you know, the resources we're taking, like these images were being shown. I know that the beings did have, they were able to see the future. So the reality that they're actually talking about real future events becomes more likely when you look at the fact that we aren't doing anything to stop what we're doing and that these beings, why wouldn't they interfere? I like, that's the thing I can't even figure out what, where this argument comes from. Why, if I was an alien race, I would interfere because I, I want that planet. If you're not going to take it, I want that planet or whatever the thought is, right? Or we'd have to f help that those species because the cataclysm will affect a lot more than just the humans. So there's a, there's this 
it makes a lot of sense that there's an invested interest and that they're that they're doing they're involving themselves that the way that they're involving themselves i think that makes a lot of sense and i think that they're showing us real future realities are they the hard realities i don't know that maybe there's maybe that is the fact is that they're trying to curb us and we do make different decisions but there's a lot of facts about how screwed up we were about to be and i think that this all plays together and the reality is is that when you look at the leaders of the world do you not think that when there's good, could be some strain about the resources of a planet that some of these leaders might go nuts and you know start using weapons i mean i don't know man I, there's a, I don't, i'm not doom and gloom but i but their involvement with us does make sense to me and and so that's that's how I see that. I, I don't like to, th I don't think they're demons, but I can see where it comes from. But I also think humans have to kind of step up in themselves a little bit to, to approach their fears. So they aren't projecting their fears onto them. And uh, yeah, that's I just want to comment though on the resources, the resources of the world. Like um, I think the, the environment, of course we've polluted the ocean, pollution is a problem, but I don't think the pollution is, is that serious. So the resources, in fact, we're told by our government that it's, worse than it really is. Like a lot of studies indicate that we could sustain 9 billion people. I mean, we could do that. And we're told that we, we just can. keep going, man. Just keep going. Uh, and, and we're told that global warming is such a serious threat, but this is a big lie. It's not a big threat. Wait, so, wait, back up, back up. Okay. So have you ever lived in the North? Because the North doesn't freeze, their lakes don't freeze over anymore. And the snows don't, there doesn't, dude, my friend is in Edmonton. It's, it's like four degrees in Edmonton. It's never been four degrees in our lives in Edmonton. Yeah, I think lies, the, glo man. the globalist plot to tell us that this global warming is oh, a big that, 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 It that, justifies that. global yeah, government. We're not mind controlled, man. We can think for ourselves and we no, can look out the window thousands of scientists who deny <laughs> this. There's thousands of scientists who say global warming is not a problem. So it's not a cataclysm. I mean, so what is like global warming? We've gone one and degrees since 1850. It's, it's easy to figure not out, cataclysmic. Man. I think it's easy to figure out. There's allergy that grows in the, uh, the oceans now that kills the fish. Like it just goes yeah. on and on and on. Dude, I was living in Prince George, and the 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 the, spine, the pine beetle kills the trees. Now the trees, there's no trees up there. Now it's like the environmental cataclysms that keep rocking everything else out because it's all intertwined. And then these effects are real effects, man. I don't know what news you put in your oh, mind. No, I, I agree. Effects. That's like serious. To, like there's serious something. environmental problems like the pine beetle and uh, like Fukushima's radiation. That's a serious problem. But global warming is not cataclysmic. But, but, but these are the effects of global warming. These, I mean, I don't know about Fukushima, uh, Fukushima but these, these are the effects of global warming. Well, and a lot they of scientists will cause say no. Problems, the, the intergovernment panel, it's controlled by politicians and big money and the Rothschilds, and they're lying to us. Many scientists have spoken out against this. <laughs> I'd like to say something, guys. I agree, um, Brian. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, I, uh, my, my theory on this, which I think makes a lot more sense than global warming, because I'm in Mexico right now, and it went down to where in my area it never goes down it went down to minus three right and then the next uh, the next day it was 13 degrees and then 17 degrees and then back down to minuses you know that's pretty cold for down here i mean people don't even have coats where i am and everyone's freezing i had to put three blankets on my bed so you know other theories about this is that the magnetic pole is changing and that it has changed to quite a few degrees so that places that were cold are getting warmer but places that are warm are also getting colder so if you think about the earth tilting and you know and uh, i'm not saying a total a total uh, polar change but a magnetic change of a few degrees can make a whole lot of difference and I'm experiencing this myself. I come down here every winter. It is too cold to swim. Nobody's swimming in the ocean right but now. That's natural. Climate change is not man-made climate change. It's, in 1100 it's not AD, it was far I much warmer. A... In 1100 AD, 1300 AD, it was far more warmer then than it is now. They didn't have automobiles in 1100 AD. Their streets in I England think, called think... vineyard streets because they had vineyards in England at that time. I think this is a, a bit of a... a uh, polar change rather than you know what they're saying i don't believe in that either but another yeah thing just I think of carbon say, tax yeah carbon exactly. tax. they're making money on it and you know what carbon tax 
if it made a difference, if, if it really was to help the environment, but you can, you can pay off a carbon tax. You can, um, you can buy tax from other people, right? You can, bu you can buy pollution, your ability to make pollution just by paying. So it, it's, it's only a money-making machine. It's that's all, you know, that's all it is really. That carbon tax means nothing. It's, it's not meant to stop anybody from polluting. It just, it's just there to make more money. But one thing I did want to say about this area, there's a lot of people here, spiritual people, and there's a lot of native people, um, you know, that have philosophies like Mayan philosophies and things that are saying uh, that we're going to have a humongous wave and uh, that what they feel here that it is, is a meteor. They, they believe that a meteor is, um, is going to be uh, crashing down on us and and that's the waves that you guys have seen. That's not exactly what I've seen in my visions, but that's what people here are saying in Mexico. Yeah, and uh, Crystal says that uh, she sees an explosion as the start mm. of it. Right. Uh, right. Now, and, and it comes up perhaps like a huge mushroom spider. Um, not sure exactly. Wow. But then there are other... Uh, I don't know if you caught uh, Crystal's interview on YouTube on Wednesday on Earth Files, Mimi. But uh, uh, no, Linda, because Linda I'm in the Houston, middle of a move. I'm not even watching TV or anything right now. Okay, because um, Linda, Linda um, put a graphic up which showed that uh, Crystal Crystal saw the first explosion in the southwestern part of the United States uh, or northern Mexico. And then mm. she saw explosions along the coast of the west coast. Yes, that's where this would be. Yeah, eastern yeah. coast. As well, but people now, are pe people people here are really scared. Actually, you know, uh, the pandemic is making people very weary. Anyway, but but uh, they're very scared right now of a tsunami down here. Yeah, I mean, you've been hit by uh, by a hurricane before now in, uh, in I don't know if it was, well, yeah, 1998 I went and um, I think things, had, I don't know if that was, yeah, the hurricane that, that hit in 1999 worked up Malacon in, uh, in Puerto Vallarta and further down south. Uh, there was one in, it, there was one in, um, I think it was in 210 or two, 209. Yeah. And it broke all the things here in the bay. All those where statues. Usually they don't hit. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I know. But uh, my friend was here last night and he's a native guy. And he was saying that this is the talk that's going around, you know, that a meteor is coming. So that's what people here think. Myself, I, I really have this very strong feeling for a long time now that uh, the poles have been shifting. And that's what's happening to us. That's why places that were warm are cold now. Places that well, were the cold poles have moved. Are warm. They've yeah. shown that the poles have moved. You know. Yeah. They're well, that's moving. what's happening. You yeah. know, I that but would we, explain a lot of things. We have to wonder where all this water will come from that uh, Crystal and Jeff have seen, uh, amongst right. others. I have to say. And uh, and by the way, Linda has. I, I believe, think it's a pole shift. Just, I, I yeah, think it okay. is a flip. I think the earth yeah. flips and the ocean gets displaced while it does it. It's just yeah. a, a flip. Linda has talked about this black hole burp of, uh, of the planet that it suddenly stalls and the movement of the waves will carry on uh, or, or the, the complete force of water will carry on or whether or not it's caused by some pole shift as Chris suggests or whether there's a, an outside and like a meteor. a meteor, which knocks the planet or hits the planet. If uh, it's a, like it wouldn't that. have something to be physical. that big, right? To 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 make waves come up, it would not no, have to be. It would not super cover big. the whole planet, but a yeah. shift, a shift would perhaps instantly, uh, 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 with heat, perhaps would instantly melt the ice caps, and that may produce a sudden rise. This, and they have, rise. you know, the pole shifts ha have happened before. 
they have happened. So, you know, but I think this one, you know, I, Crystal, how many degrees have you heard? I've heard 18 degrees that we've moved 18 degrees. I don't know. I just, I was trying to figure out what would cause those waves. And I just, I think I jumped to the conclusion that it would be a pole shift, but they never, they just, okay. they didn't give me anything specific about that. Right. So you don't think it's happening now? Because I think it's happening now. I think we've shifted 18 degrees or so. But the burp is something kind of sudden, right? Like if I like Melinda said, if there's this galactic burp, like maybe every 13,000 years, like we did have a cataclysm about 13,000 years ago. So maybe it's a common thing. Another connection between what uh, Crystal and, and Jeff said, Crystal said uh, around the Los Angeles area, right? The Southwest United States. And, and Jeff said that uh, Los Angeles could be wiped out, replaced with the alien city, like the first alien city on Earth, could be right where Los Angeles is. Could today. be a floating city. Like Crystal. Or, or Jeff said Los Angeles, an alien city at Los Angeles area. Right. Yeah, but I saw it, floating but, city. I saw that. I saw the cities in the land. Yeah. I you saw, saw it on the, It's not a floating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you Crystal saw land? Saw yeah. Mine, I, saw, I mine, saw ocean. I don't know that mine was specific. It seemed general, right? It was like. I don't know. It would it, because yeah, Edgar know. Casey saw the whole West Coast thinking, right? right? He saw like different borders where the beach would be sort of really inland from there. Sort yeah, of. I don't know that, my, that mine was meant continent. to. I don't know that mine was supposed to be specific. It wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't. It didn't right. seem. I don't know. It didn't seem like. It seemed general, right? The whole picture oh, okay. was general. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I, I I report what came out, but it's uh, the fact is the city was like dead center of the the continent, and so I don't know. It, mm -hmm. I can't say that the city that is going to happen. I don't know. That, that's what they showed me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we're sort of gloom and doom tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So maybe just the, trying to get to the bottom day. of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What's that? So maybe we're trying just trying to get to the bottom of it, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm just kidding. We have yeah. to think about it because yeah. every abductee has been warned and yeah, we're all right. asked to warn. Yeah. You know, and it's it's not a very nice subject, but but um th this is what we're being asked to do, you know. Pretty much uh, everybody. For Jeff. Uh Jeff, I was just wondering um do you know of or do you think there's any ways to enhance communication with with grays like uh what about like meditation or anything like that like especially if you're already a contactee do you think that makes it easier or to have experiences uh to, easier to have contact is that what you're saying are you talking yeah, about psychic yeah. contact you're talking psychic contact or or um, physical I, contact? I you know what anything psychic contact in-person contact orbs whatever it may be ufos you'll find that both me and Crystal have psychic contact with our beings. Yeah, we both do. Yeah. So it's it's obviously that once you contact with them, you can continue to have contact with them. Yeah. Oh, okay. But do, yeah. do you find it gets even more enhanced? Like, I don't know if you've ever tried meditating or anything like that, but I've heard similar stories before about people um, meditating and even inadvertently sometimes making contact with beings like this. Yeah, I, I believe that they're, they're, they're in whatever realm is, is outside of our bodies. They're, they're in that realm. And I do think that they're, I've heard that too. And I, I, I do believe that I believe that they, uh, that they do contact people that way. And I've heard of mystic, mystical things happening to people when they, uh, when that has happened. I believe that that can happen. Yeah. Well, Jeff, you have yeah, the mystic and book, also, right? Well, oh, you said the mystic book, like you, you've written the mystic book and those are like exercises, like visualizing orbs and shapes like pyramids and yeah. this is what you've actually written yourself that they yeah that's you. right so yeah. i think that answers chad's question in terms of what to do in terms of a spiritual practice well right? i would i would i would read stephen greer's um books mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know whatever. because yeah. he has a protocol for doing it and oh, yeah. the guy in the ranch the the um the guy that does the sea but he said he ranch yeah down in washington yeah yeah by, by uh, mount adams yeah i'd like to go there one yeah because those guys all have a protocol that they do right right 
Yeah, any and, altered and, state of consciousness as well, like it sh shaman uh, can enter an altered state of consciousness through plant medicines. Uh, anyone can with plant medicines, mm -hmm. uh, meditation. Um, there's also psychedelics, like even LSD and things will put people into an altered state of consciousness, which can remove their like thinking mind and enhance their intuition. People have a lot of experiences with extraterrestrials when they are in altered states of consciousness mm -hmm. and those can yeah. be achieved in so many different ways. Yeah, I was gonna ask about that because I've, I've heard things like that when people are on DMT, uh, if you guys thought that they are in fact communicating with the same beings that uh, contactees would be communicating with, possibly. I don't I think, think that's so. True. People have seen grays with DMT, so I think that's true. Really? But, but I like uh, I like Jeff's mystic book. It gives you and it, it shows work, right? Your mystic book, Jeff. You have to do the work. You have to do the meditation and various exercises. You know, to reach a gray, you can't just go out into the stars and say, "Hey, show up." <laughs> right. you know, so, like meditation is an effort. But right. I have read cases of people on DMT seeing grays. So I think that's real. It's yeah, I think I think that alternate realm, whatever that realm is, that is that you'd have a spirit interaction with, they can go there. So yeah, and I think you can conjure them up and and all that stuff if you if you seek to do that. I think you can do that. Yeah. Cool. Interesting. And um, I was reading something before about uh, specifically the the apex is the the tops of mountains uh, at, the, at the very top, the summits. And it was something to do with vortex energy, uh, maybe electromagnetism, I can't quite remember, but I was kind of, I, I don't know, I had the idea or, or intuitively felt that maybe that would be a place where it would be even easier to maybe engage in such things. Like, you know, you, you look at old stories and stuff and you look at ancient aliens and stuff and there seems to be so many stories about whether it's, you know, greys or other beings, Anunnaki, whoever it is, uh, dwelling on the tops of mountains and in very high places. So I wonder if there is something to that. I believe it. I believe that. They're also dwelling inside the mountains, like Mount Shasta yeah. in the Andes in Peru. You know, it seems like people, uh, extraterrestrials are living under the water. Uh, and there's often ships seen coming out of water and my experience was in the Andes, um, the one I had. Oh. And um, a lot of people up there in the mountains, they see that. And, they, and people think that they're, they're living there, that they actually live there. And I don't know if it's caves or... Yeah, I, I do think that I do. I think you keep uh, referencing like kind of... Um yeah again I, I do think that there's energies throughout the kind of the natural land and I do think that that attracts certain beings and I do think that uh, uh, yeah that they use those energies and that they can those energies can alter our minds like the top of mountains and then we can have experiences on top of the mountains I do believe that I do believe that yes I haven't had any experiences except for the one on, on Squamish there which was up in the mountain and I had a contact event there and that was a known that's a known area where you see you can see orbs and UFOs and stuff yeah, yeah that's interesting that you had that experience on the chief which I believe is the second largest single body of granite in the, yeah. in the world after right. uh, the spot in Yosemite um, and both Yosemite uh, and other areas that, that have large granite bodies uh, apparently are known for a lot of strange phenomena, including like the uh, strange disappearances that like David Polites talks about in his books, Missing 411 and stuff. Um, and uh, now obviously that's more so about disappearances under strange circumstances that don't make any sense, not necessarily about contact, but I think there might be something with maybe granite um, and maybe other materials as well, uh, as well as bodies of water. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if certain bodies of water would, would be a conductor of sorts more than other types, but that is interesting. You have that on top of the chief end of that area is a known spot for it because that is a massive single piece of granite. There's also something that seems to be related to the moon cycles. So, okay, yeah, you're actually, you're, you're, this is interesting that my contact events all happened out in nature. So where they occur says some things. Um, so yeah, one of them was on, a, two, both of them were off of lakes. 
Uh, the one that was off the lake was actually around a full moon. I know that. The Hornby Island event was on the beach. Um, and the northern, what was also really weird was that every time I attempted to go into the deep woods or deep, like go deep and kind of approach my fears, that I would have a contact event there. So that northern Saskatchewan one was really weird too. Um, but uh, yeah, those are, it's kind of weird. I did, I did notice that trend, the two lakes. And then I had two contact events around lakes. I thought that was, really, and it's not the only time either. I'll have another contact event at a, at a lake as well too. Yeah. yeah well, Crystal, um, say goodbye. Jeff, I want to just ask one thing. You said that uh, the, the government's accused the aliens of being demonic forces, like in the 1950s with Eisenhower and so forth. They say, well, these things could be demonic. Um, my right. feeling about that is they're projecting their own faults on the aliens. Like the, these elitists, the globalists, they're, they're demonic. Many people think that they're actually sa satanic. They're, they're practicing Satanists. So right. they would project their own faults on the gray. Say, oh, these grays are demonic because they themselves are demonic. That's my <laughs> they theory. themselves are demonic. I mean, literally, I, I, I think that's the case. Right. I, yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry to interrupt. I've, I've got to go as well, I'm afraid. Uh, I have to do the shopping at 8 o'clock. So uh, <laughs> right. 8 o'clock in the morning late. here. So. I've got hey, to go great, great you come. Well. At least you said goodbye. Crystal just left us a note. So thanks for saying goodbye, Ian. I don't yeah. I and, didn't and, want to interrupt. Uh, inter and you, no, you, introduced anyway. us, you introduced us to Vanessa and Savannah. They're coming on this Saturday. So I'm sure Yeah, that's good. Us. Yeah, that, that's good. That would be really good. So anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thanks again for having okay, me. Take care. Me, me, you are so in touch. Ian? And Jeff, fantastic presentation again. Thanks, and, and we we'll, we'll definitely need to talk some more. Okay, yeah, I, I'm sending you uh, right now actually the images. Okay, perfect. That's just yeah. what I need. Thank yeah. you very much. Should I, should See I you, write everyone. to you, Ian? Take care, Ian. Ian, yeah. yes. me, me. Should yeah. I write to you? <laughs> yeah, write to me. Write to me with that, that email address. I've got yours as well. So okay. We'll do that. All right. Nice to okay. see you. Good Take night. Care. I'm Keep going safe, to. Bye bye. See you soon. See ya. Bye. Bye. Awesome. Jeff, I want hey to guys, I think uh, I'm going to sign off too because I have well, an early morning rise up. I need to finish packing. Yeah, awesome. I'm moving yeah. in three days. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. But I, maybe I want to ask Jeff a question that you raised earlier. It's quite a profound okay. question about um, yeah, sure. about the the globalist agenda. Like, uh, are the Greys? Uh, guiding the United Nations, working with the global agenda, or is it just the reptilians and the greys are going to intervene against them? Because I think the, the greys, they seem to have a very orderly society, you know, with the their AI or, or God conscious, everything's orderly, whereas human beings, you know, we're kind of a failed experiment. We're kind of wild. And, and like Jeff pointed out, we don't have any collectivism, any unity. So perhaps this whole COVID thing, you know, we have to wear masks and social distance, and we're, we're learning to be controlled. Maybe is this, is there a good side to this that the grades are involved with this, or is this the dark side? So I wonder if Jeff could comment on that. I, I don't know. Uh, is there a good side <laughs> yeah, to I globalism? Don't I, don't, uh, I don't know the answers to these questions. I, uh, I, I, just, have, <laughs> I just have the experiences that I have. Um, could, I, could I doubt that they're involving themselves? I don't doubt that. I don't know that, though I don't know that these things would be conscious though. That's what I, I don't know that. These beings, their abilities to, to take people, then erase the memories and yet plant subconscious information so you're motivated. Um, that's what they did with me <laughs> and I that was there were different periods of my life where that was the case and and those were good motivations they did they guided me and they directed me in certain ways so I could see that that could be happening but I just don't know what's happening I don't know I don't know man I don't know who's talking to who and and I know I, I guess we all want to kind of believe but I think I think we should believe in good values and I think when when we are attempting humans us humans are attempting to, to do something good uh, like save the environment, whether we maybe disagree with its with the application, we don't know that this is us trying. This is the thing. I, I always have a an eye of compassion to all this. I think humans are we're trying. Like we all try. We all individually we try to live out our lives. We we do our best. And I think the human race is doing that. I think the human race is trying their best. I don't think uh, I don't think anyone really fully understands what they're doing. And I think that we all are trying their best. Even the experts can fail and they can mess up and they can they should be forgiven sometimes if they kind of messed up. And I. I have more compassion about it. And I think that humans are trying, um, but I don't know if this is agreements with that being or that race. I just don't know those details. Yeah. Yeah, well, definitely have a, have a have a read through those agendas, Jeff. Yeah, I think you'll be keep... finding tick, 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 tick. You'll right. be able to tick off all the stuff because um, 
you know, I, I, I think it's being implemented and I definitely think, you know, that they're influencing, you know, for sure. Right. Uh, Mimi, I agree that right. they have this agenda like 2030, but my question is, are the grays behind it or is it just these bad reptilians? Like well, who's above them? If, that, that's a mystery to me, you know? If we can, if we can go by Jeff's visions and by Crystal's visions that they've had and things that they've been told, right? And then you look at what's being implemented. I mean, every city has signed on to the Green New Deal. Every city has signed on to, to Agenda 2030. Every city, Vancouver, New York, every, everything. And you see the gentrification and you see the process that it's going through. You see that, you know, more, uh, more taxation on cars. They're going to take cars that are old off the road, more bike lanes. And you see this in every single city. You see that. You, they want people out of cars. They want people living in closer contact in the city. They want 5G cities. And, um, you know, probably services will be taken from the your, country. Your face area. is uh, fading from the camera here. You oh, that. sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think if you took, say you took internet and water or internet and not water, but say, internet and um, electricity. You had failing electricity out in the country. A lot of people would come into town. They just couldn't live there. And we're, we're too used to internet. So if you had a really crappy connection and that's your way to you know, connect with the world, you're not gonna stay on the farm. Probably. Yeah, I agree with all that manipulation that you're saying that it's deliberate, yeah. it's global and then from the it's top down. happening, right? But many people like Dave and Ike and others say, well, the Rothschilds have a relationship with the reptilians. It's the reptilians working through the human power structure through governments. So is it not the greys or like Jeff saying, they're, if they're all together, maybe they just allow this to happen on earth. Like there's lions and there's just Giselles. Maybe the Federation is just allowing these uh, lion <laughs> reptilians well, to have their way. Let me ask you a question. This is, this is the, the million dollar question for me. Okay. When, when the Anunnaki came to Earth and they brought all that technology, they were not the greys, right? They were serpent beings. They were reptilians. So the reptilians gave us the technology that, that human beings from that time onwards. I'm not saying Atlantis. Atlantis had other, higher, uh, better technology, but from, from thir say, when the Anunnaki came, 1,300, uh, 13,000 years ago, say, when they arrived. Well, well, people started to farm and they did this and they did that. And, you know, they were making cloth and they learned how to work with silver and, and iron and copper. So the development happened from the reptilian race. And we have reptilian race in us. So... You know, I mean, uh, sure, the Greys have technologies. Maybe they have Atlantean technologies, but certainly the technologies that we have now are based from the reptilians. We have them to thank for our brain. I mean, we are reptiles. We we look like reptiles when we we're born. We're obviously oh, no one in my family. Oh no, no, not, we're all, not, we're all not when Nordic, we're born, Aryan, uh, when the baby Palladian. is made. <laughs> we look exactly like a like like a tadpole, yeah, yeah. right? We are reptilian biologically when we start out in life. So obviously we're already hybrids with them. So, you know, I, 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 I tend to think that it's them and the Anunnaki, you know, that are, that have given us all this stuff. Yeah, they've been here for thousands of years, reptilians. Yes. Right? Ancient yes. statues, reptilians, carvings and stone. People were more familiar with them thousands of years ago. Yeah, I agree. They've been right. around a long time. And they seem well, to be dominating yeah. a bad. But right? the gray agenda is different from the reptilian, right? The reptilian agenda and te reptilian technology is different. Yeah, I trust the graves. That's why I'm getting inspired uh, having met Jeff and now I'm buying into the gray agenda. But mm -hmm. I saw this question about the reptilians and the relationship there. And maybe the law of karma just lets it all happen. Mm -hmm. I like Jeff's guys, explanation of the gazelles and the, and the lions, Jeff. The gazelles and the lions, yeah. Good yeah. explanation, yeah. Yeah, it's just a jungle is what it is. And lizards are the lions and 
you know, still the whole thing. <laughs> one, one thing I was going to mention, you, you mentioned the Anunnaki. I almost forgot that story I mentioned earlier from Pitt Lake regarding my, uh, my friend's experience. Um, I recounted the, his story to a fellow I know named Derek White Sky Cloud, who is from Surrey. And uh, I believe he has a radio show or something as well, but he's a contactee um, for many years, I guess. And he's actually, I guess, got a degree of psychic abilities, I guess would be the term. And he's helped some police uh, on certain cases, uh, which is more of a rare thing, obviously, for a psychic or a self-proclaimed psychic. But anyways, he seems to be under the impression that those beings the tall luminescent being that was seen uh, where you couldn't really quite make out the detail on it uh, were Anunnaki. He, that's, that's his opinion anyway, is that he thinks- You know what, Anunnaki. Chad, that's right on because that's, those are the beings that, that I've been in contact with. And I'm certain that they're angels, angelic, maybe fallen angels, Anunnaki. Oh, wow. The tall, yeah. the, tall the very tall uh, beings that, that are related to the Noah people. Yeah, so just the, just the, that's what the, I think. Yeah, you and there's know. the height so there. Not, my people are not grays. Though, though, they're they're those beings because you couldn't tell their features. They had so much light coming out of them that I couldn't tell what their features are. Glowing humans. Now I, I'm a little yeah. confused about the the Anunnaki thing uh, being reptilian or not because I've you know I see some of the other um, examples given by researchers and. I, I've always been kind of under the impression that the Anunnaki were those beings that are in the, uh, I don't know if that's the Sumerian tablets or the Babylonian tablets, and they look like humans with beards and stuff. So where am I going wrong on that? Well, you know, things are allegorical, right? So just like, just like our embryo, it looks like a reptile. Maybe their embryo looks like a reptile. So, because it's allegorical, maybe they didn't have snake faces, but they're reptilian in the same way that we're mammalian and reptilian. You know, I mean, people would say that we're not, but look at, you know, we have a reptilian brain, our, our embryos look like tadpoles, you know, so we start out in some, some way as a reptilian and, and they may have looked exactly like us. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, you maybe know, so. um, I would find it interesting if the if it was, in fact, Anunnaki or reptilian, whatever, uh, in that pit lake area, because there's so much other phenomena going on there, it would, it would kind of lead me to believe that these beings know what's going on there, probably with other types of entities as well, whether it's Sasquatch or greys or orbs or, or whatever's going on there. What's really weird camp too is out there. Let's do a group camp out at pit lake. Right on that walkway between the marsh and the lake, we should camp right there. That's, that's Minnetonka Park, up. right? Isn't that Minnetonka Park? No, no, Park? no. Pit, Pit Lake is over the, the Pit Bridge on the well, left. Well, well, Minnetonka, Minnetonka Region Regional one. Park is yeah. it is on the west side of Pit Lake on the yeah. Port Quitlam side. Yeah. And the, the other side would be like you got Pit Meadows and and then Golden Ears Provincial Park, where the actual Golden Ears are right there on the other side of the lake. So I had a contact event there at Minicata Park too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. So right at Minicata Park, in Minicata Park, I had a contact event and it was with a friend. And I, I did a video on that. Um, it's the how I how I learned great aliens want Earth to join a federation of planets. And there's a and that's in Minicata Park, yeah. Oh yeah. I've, I've heard some a couple strange things about Minicata as well, but it's not too surprising because it's all in that area there. Yeah. Where a lot of this stuff uh, seems to happen. Yeah, weird. Weird. Yeah, the choices of where I had one at Belcara as well, the Belcara Lake. So, oh, really? Yeah, Belcara, yeah the, the choices of where all these things happen. Yeah. And in Mundy Park, I had two in outside Mundy Park. Yeah, in Coquitlam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bel Belcara. Yeah, I, I I like that region. I did a little hike there up to the um uh. To the mountain. I, forget, I forget what that body of water is called. Barard Inlet that leads into the um, Indian Arm. Indian yeah, Indian Arm. Arm. That's yeah, right. Indian it's Arm, a beautiful yeah. area. Um, yeah. 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 yeah the, that is a that's a cool area too um but i was gonna say yeah about the minicata area pit lake area um the, the, there's another thing i came across recently uh i was reading about the area just looking at paranormal things about the area and there's actually some some very old stories that like the the native americans have from the region and, and they talk about tunnels being connected connecting places like pit lake all the way out to tawasson 
and then go tunnels that go the other way. There are very deadly tunnels, mind you. They said tunnels, underground tunnels that can shoot you up. I don't know if you're surfing or how it is, but I got to research it more. But tunnels that can shoot you up towards like Boston Bar and stuff. It, it's just some, some wild stories about that area. Just more ancient, more of the ancient variety that are, you know, probably hundreds of years old, these stories. Um, guys, I have to get going. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you, it's Jeff. Been a, it's been yeah. six hours, Jeff. Six yeah, hours. Six thank hours. You, I think it's oh, a record for you even. Yeah, mm -hmm. nuts. Brian, what do you, so uh, did you record any of it or what? Well, all uh, of this is recorded all for of six it. hours. Okay, I don't know what to do there. We'll have to oh. redo it, right? Oh, well, yeah, I can, you can, I can send all the video in, and most of what you did is, was good. The parts where there was writing over it, I guess you and I can just redo that bit. Right? Yeah, so give it to me. I'll yeah. edit it. I'll pull out what is good, and then we can redo what we have to redo. So. Yeah, we must have yeah, about was four really good awesome, hours. Jeff. Thank Thanks, you so Mimi. much. Thank you. I know Thank it was you, really Jeff. hard, but it but you did a great job. Yeah, that was. Oh yeah, appreciate that. That was a great presentation. Very interesting. Thanks, Chad. Hey, Chad, you should come back, man. You always have a lot to say. You have a lot to say today, and so uh, I hope you come back next time. Uh, yeah, and I definitely have will. your camera next time, Chad. We want to yeah. see you. I, I yeah, know, Chad. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to replace it. I'm going to replace it. Yeah, you've got a lot of knowledge, and especially you got a lot of knowledge about the Lower Mainland. So that's always in my. We're in Lake BC, and I have more contact events here in BC. So that's really cool. So. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when's your next pre presentation, Jeff? What do you oh. want to do? I think this is part six, right? Yeah, this is part six. Yeah, I got. I got to just. I keep hammering that book, but. Uh, um, first things first, just get me that video. I'll have to edit it and pull out what doesn't work. And then we have to redo the presentation. Yeah. Thanks guys. So, okay. okay. Very, we started Roger, with 17 people. Only seven Mimi, left, but we should give Steve, a, a Brian, a Jeff. For Jeff here. We should give Jeff a yeah. round. Of Thanks applause. guys. Thank another, you. Thank you. Thank you Jeff. Another round thank of applause. Thank you for your words of wisdom and experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for coming. I loved it. Thanks so much everyone for being okay. here. I appreciate it. Mwah. Good all night. Right. Love guys, to you all. Good night. Yeah. Take Bye. care. Good night. So now what? <laughs> Seven uh, well, hours. That was, really yeah, I guess, that was really good. Thank you, Brian, for saying that all up. I guess so we good. should wrap yeah. up. My my roommate's at home. He might be asleep now, so I don't want to be too, too long. <laughs> all right. <laughs>